Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah good. Uh, so my name is Tero Kaukoma. I'm the producer of Iron Sky. And I don't know if you have seen the film. Is there anybody who saw the film? Okay, good. Um, so, and I'm so happy it has been going well here in Germany, uh, which was which was very uh, important important place for our film. Um, I will explain you a little bit uh, what happened and how it started and what happened when we did it, how we financed it, and uh, uh, a little bit maybe what we are planning for the future and so on. And uh, I hope that. I think we will have then some questions if, if you wish in, the, in, in a little bit later. Or if you want to ask anything in between, I don't mind. My problem is that I don't see you. You have to shout. Um, so, Iron Sky, there's, there's a long history. I don't know if anybody of you have heard about or even seen the film called Star Wreck. There is some. So Star Trek started like um, as a project more than 10 years ago, maybe about 15 years ago, when a young Star Trek fan called Samuli Torsonen, who is who you can see on, on this video cover, DVD cover, um, he started to make his own film called Star Trek, and he made it made like a four-minute long short film, which he put out in the internet. And he started to get feedback from the people who liked it and, and encouraged him to do more. And he, he made like, I don't know, maybe six minute version and 10 minute version and more feedback, more encouragement. And suddenly this guy who was, I don't know, 18, 19, he, uh, in some point, he realized that he should actually do uh, a little bit longer thing, but he uh, find out that actually he's not able to direct that film. So he met Timo, Timo Vorensola, who is a, a, a tall guy and a big voice, and suddenly thought like, well, this guy, he must be able to direct. And together, they continued doing Star Trek. And bit by bit, and it took seven years for them, they shot a film in the kitchen of uh, Samuel's mother. And they did not have any budget. They, uh, they had friends acting there. And nevertheless, it became like a feature-length film, which they released in internet legally for free, and uh, it started to uh, work really well. People loved it, and uh, there's millions of people who saw it already. And, and then later, it was also released commercially on DVD in, in many territories like Scandinavia and in, in UK, Japan, North America, and, and so forth. Uh, and then these guys, after getting that film out, they had a, a sauna evening. And having sauna, a couple of beers, and thinking what to do next. And there was this guy called Jarmo Puskala, who was one of the writers on that team, who said, like, why don't we make a film about Nazis from the moon? Um, they were laughing and taking more beer and, and not taking it seriously, but, but something happened, and then, and then later they, they really started to uh, think about that idea and, and find out some, some uh, conspiracy theories about the subject and so forth. Uh, and so they decided to make that film. They hired um, quite famous uh, science fiction author from Finland, Johanna Sinisalo, who came on board and, and drafted the story for this film, together with Timo and Samuli and the whole team. Bunch of young guys and one experienced writer. And they realized that this time 
we need maybe a little bit money. We need a, a, a real professional actors and so forth. And that's why I'm here, because then they came to me. Uh, my production company, I've been doing, uh, producing films like 16, 17 years, about like almost 20 films, and, and, and they came to me because of, I don't know why, but uh, I remember that moment they came with, uh, it was like 12-page treatment of the story. And I read it, I was laughing out loud a lot, I found it really, really hilarious, and I thought this film is going to cost 100 million. And so then I met with Timo and Samuli, and, and we started to, we started to uh, uh, think, what can we do? First of all, we have to make this film. It's the best idea ever. It's the best concept ever. Uh, but we don't, we won't have 100 million. And, and we come from Finland, where a film usually cost one, two million. And, but we decided, let's find a way to do it. And, and this was more than six years ago. And, and we started to, to develop the script to make the story to work on, on a, as a script, to, to develop the production planning, how we do it, to develop the financing plan, how we would find the money. And, and we decided, or we tried to decide, like, let's keep the budget in 4 million euros, which is quite far from 100 million. And and that's what happened, and, and we started to uh, develop, and, and the good thing was, really good thing was, that we were not starting from the scratch, because what these guys did with Star Trek, there was a, already a big fan base for that film, and, and, and there was, so there was an existing internet community, and of course we started to communicate with that community from the, from the beginning. And, uh, and we did it in man many ways. It's, uh, I think there's a lot of terminology around these things, but how I learned this thing is this, like a triangle of crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, and crowd investment, crowd investing. And, and from the beginning, we did crowd, crowdsourcing a lot. Which, which, as I understand it, it's, it's you, you source out tasks for the people. And there was a really good platform which was actually created by Timo Warrensel, our director. And it, it, it's called frekkamovie.com. And it was a platform where we could uh, give any kind of task for people, uh, asking their help in ideas or in, in concrete, concrete um, I give you an example. For, for the story, story-wise, for example, um, the task, one of the tasks, as an example, was that we are developing this film which takes place in 2018. And we would like you to tell us how the society will be in, in, in the near future. How do you see it? What's going to happen? And it was really, really nice reading all these very deep visions, what's going to happen in the near future, and, and it was serving as really good creative food for our creative team once we were developing the story. Uh, we did ask people like, uh, in the later phase, as an example, we have a scene, we shoot the film, we have a scene in front of a cinema, and we need fictional movie posters. Please, can you design? And people were designing, and there was a lot of those, and then together with the people, we chose 10 best one, ones, 10 most suitable ones, 
and put it in, in a, as a props on the background. And, and these kind of things, we, we made like thousands, at least hundreds, probably a couple of thousands of tasks for people. And, and people did uh, contribute, and people were really, really helpful, and people were really, really committed. Um, then we started to, once we were proceeding, we started to build different kind of applications, you might say, for um, keeping people involved. And, and one of those applications was and has been uh, Demand Iron Sky, which, um, which was really handy in many aspects. It worked a uh, very simple way. People who were interested on in Iron Sky, they could announce that I want to see Iron Sky in my hometown cinema. And here's my email address, click, and then you became a, a, a red spot on a Google map. And, uh, and, and this gave us really good um, sort of networks which we could also use locally. For example, when we were shooting the film here in Germany, uh, we shot half of the film in, in Frankfurt, which was playing in New York. And we, again, just one example, we were in a situation that we are having like a, 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 a crowd scene, we need a lot of people. On one Sunday, when we stopped uh, traffic on the main street of Frankfurt, and and we realized we don't have enough people two days before, and we don't have a budget for more people. So what do we do? We have this demand Iron Sky list of, of people from Germany, and, and we send a short no, note that we are here shooting the film and we need you. If you want to have a different Sunday, join, our, join the shootings, be an extra, meet the director, meet the actors, we don't have any money, we will serve you lunch. And uh, it was so fast, like people were lining up and, and, and it worked and we got a really nice scene with a lot of people and people had a really different Sunday and good experience. And uh, this became really helpful once, once we were distributing, when we came to the distribution phase of the film, and you had all those people which you could find, find locally, territory by territory, city by city, however. Of course, all these crowds, what we had, were very, very helpful in, in sharing whatever kind of information. Um, then about money, because this was one of the biggest problems we, we had, uh, and it was so difficult to get this, this project off the ground. As I told you, we had this plan to have the budget in 4 million euros, and unfortunately that was a bit unrealistic. And, and it was growing once, once we were developing the story, and, and, and we found out different kind of things, and okay, we found out also that there's a huge interest for the film, and our sort of targets were a little bit uh, increasing, and, and the budget was growing. Uh, we had started from the beginning this crowdfunding, which, as I understand, crowdfunding is, is a funding where Individuals are sending money for different kind of reasons, but not expecting money back. And from the beginning, we were, um, we were selling different kind of, of articles, like War Bond was a really good example. Uh, it was a nice document and it was a way for people to support us. Uh, it costed 50, 50 bucks, and, 
Uh, and all these things, they were really helpful already from the beginning once we were developing and, and, and getting further. Because this whole period of many years, it's really, really hard to get things going on and, and keeping sort of like developing and, and, and you need some funds. Uh, we had a web store, we were selling t-shirts and, and stuff. And then... Uh, We did also do, uh, as part of the crowdfunding thing, we established Iron Sky Sneak Peek, which was um, a platform or, let's say, a platform where people could join by paying minimum one euro. But also, if you wish, you could pay three or five or ten, twenty, forty. I think 100 was there a maximum. And, and people did join. And, and what people got was that they get behind the scenes. They could follow how we produce the first five minutes of the film. Like starting, first we released like the director's vision about the beginning. And, and the next was the script of the beginning of the film. And then came like a storyboard. and. And then came a, a rough cut from the shootings. Then it was added with the sound work and the music and visual effects and these kind of uh, phases, which which took like one year. And this this also I took this as an example because this became a really really nice and important platform for us. Uh, there was a couple of thousand pe of people, I think like uh, almost 4,000 people, and, uh, and we found out that, that it was so practical and fast way of getting feedback, whatever you do. Uh, for example, we were editing trailers or some material, and, and you wanted some feedback. You didn't want to publish it yet for the, for the audience. You, you just wanted to have some feedback. And so we, we, we put it out there in the Aroska sneak peek. And in, in half a day, you have a couple of thousand of comments. And that was really, really helpful. We then, even later, when we were uh, releasing the film, and there, there was the discussion what's what is going to be our poster, the main poster, what we want to use. And, and uh, there, was, there was different kind of, you see it there, different kind of um, sketches and ideas, and, and we just wanted to, to test those with our sneak peek uh, community and, and, and got uh, got help to make our decision, and these kind of things. So in this case, it was, it was really much like uh, crowdfunding, which, uh, which became much, much more than, than only, only the, the money. Um, what's happening here? Maybe is this work? Now, could you help, help me? Go forward. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Anyway, I can do it from here, no problem. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, and then was this third side of this triangle, which, which is called crowd investing, and, and this was something which, um, which we launched to May 2010. And this was after already several years of development and trying to get the money together. And we, we anyway, we had this four million, which was the initial target, but it was not enough. and, and uh, we had already cancelled the 
shootings or postponed the shootings two times. And we were struggling, and it was very close that the whole thing is, is falling apart. And um, it was then May 2010, with the inspiration from a British documentary film called Age of Stupid, where they did fund one million pounds, the whole budget, through, through the community in, in, in UK, where people, individuals were investing in the film. Investing meaning that if you put money in there and if the film makes profit, you will get you will get your share back. And that's what we did uh, May 2010 when we, we went to Cannes Film Festival like every year for begging money. And it was kind of a feeling that if, if we don't get this budget together, this will fall in pieces. And, and uh, uh, luckily, it, it worked out really well that this investing program took really strongly uh, speed, which was a big signal for other investors who were already interested but hesitating, and it was a big signal for banks to, to help to make the cash flow on the production. And, and uh, in the end of the day, we did get uh, this crowd investments worth of 700,000 euros, which was quite a lot of money. It is quite a lot of money, and it also affected on the traditional investments another two million, I would say, was the, was the additional effect. So that was, in the end of the day, the moment when uh, uh, we knew, finally, that we will make the film. And, and we got the, the budget together. And, and then we started the production later 2010. I mean, initially and in general, the whole production was uh, a combination of traditional film funding and crowd, uh, crowd funding. Uh, it was set up as a Finnish, German, Australian co-production. And, and then, as I just told, the, the final kick we got from the internet community, and, and we could start the production. And so we did the film, we shot half of the film in Germany, half of the film in, in, uh, in uh, Australia. Uh, we had a lot of good luck, but we also had a lot of bad luck. We, for example, in we, we, the last two shooting days in, in uh, Frankfurt, we were suddenly hit by a, a, a heavy snowstorm, and we had to cancel the days. Uh, and we thought, well, no worries, let's do these scenes in Australia. And once we were in Australia, a bit later, continuing the shooting, there was the biggest floods in, in Brisbane area. And, and which caused us uh, a lot of problems. And, uh, and many other things also caused, caused us to be uh, in a big problems. We went over budget, and in the end of the day, our production budget is very close to 8 million. So from the initial, we almost doubled. Once we started the production, the, the official budget was 6.8 million, and so we went like 1.2 million over, which is quite a lot of money. The other problem, talking about problems also, uh, was that was the distribution system. We were having a film with a really wide and active and committed internet community, a big fan base. And, and they were following the production, and this community was growing and growing, and the engagement was growing. And uh, we, we were not able to do, like a Hollywood film, to, uh, to, 
to make a day and date release, like a big studio film. You know, nowadays they come basically all over the world the same day. So what we could do, we could manage a year ago in April, the more or less simultaneous release in, in Scandinavia and here in Germany and, and Switzerland, Austria and a couple of other countries. And then in the time span of, of two months or something, a little bit more territories. But, but, but we, we missed a lot uh, bigger territories and, and there's still some countries like as an example, Latin America, who haven't, haven't um, released the film so far. It's coming out soon there. And um, so that kind of led us in a, in a not so nice situation because we had a film and there was, a, there was an audience waiting for it and in many places they could not get it. Of course, they could get it illegally. And, and, and uh, of course, that's what happened big time. So this is about the investment. But, but I want to go a little bit further uh, to, mention, to mention a little bit like about the plans, because it's connected to, to um, to our experience in Iron Sky, like we are, we are very seriously planning uh, to produce a prequel as well as a sequel. We feel that there's so many stories to tell, for uh, to explain how the Nazis ended up to the moon, and and we we. We feel there's so much material that you can't tell this in one film or in two films. So we are heading towards a TV series. We are very early stage uh, as, uh, developing that. And I don't even have a schedule for the production or for the release. Then we have, um, we have good ideas for a sequel, for a film. It's going to be a film, which uh, it's also very early to stay, say anything about the schedule. My guess is that the earliest we will shoot that film is 2015, easily 2016. Uh, and I think we had a, a, a nice experience with Iron Sky. And, and I hope we learned a lot from the mistakes we did and, and from the things we had to do because not otherwise getting the film financed and, and so forth. And, and one of the things which is driving us once we are developing the sequel is like how to get an independent film uh, released day and date at least such a film like we feel that there's a, a, a big internet community, you, you have to get it out there. And if you don't have the studio, Hollywood studio machine, it's, uh, it's not going to be easy. But luckily, of course, there's a lot of development in the, in the uh, digital distribution platforms. And, and so somewhere there, uh, we want to find the solution to give people the, the ways to consume the film uh, when they want and also to consume it legally, not to give them as an only possibility to have an illegal download. So, that is something what we are, uh, which feels like a next mission to try to make at least as good film as original Iron Sky, hopefully better, and, and, and to build up the distribution in a bit uh, different way. There, there is something, 
something else. There's actually, uh, this is already completed. We did like, uh, uh, when did we release film? We, we actually, we released the film, maybe you know, part of you know that it was in Berlin Film Festival like one and a half years ago, February 2012. And that was one of the best news we got along the whole way to release this film exactly in, in Berlin Film Festival. And we got that information like last minute. I already, personally, I, I didn't believe anymore that we get in there because nothing, we didn't hear nothing. But then suddenly came the news that you are in, in Panorama. And, and uh, it was a dream come true but also, we, 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 had, we were really, really in a hurry to complete the film, and we did. It was completed like two days before the premiere in Berlin. But what we also had to do is, uh, uh, we had to, for example, cut something out as a visual effects. We didn't have time, nor the money, but, but sort of like, we, we have to get the film to Berlin. And now, that's why we did quite soon after we started to, to uh, uh, produce, you could say, the original vision of the film. And, and this is now done, and it's like 20 minutes longer version. There is a lot, of, lot more visual effects, and, and there's a, a lot more of, of, of Iron Sky humor in it, and, and so forth. Uh, we have no release date that for yet. I'm sure it's coming out in Germany also, and my guess is that it's coming, coming out like uh, somewhere in autumn, but uh, it's up to the distributor. And, and uh, then there's something else just to, uh, just to uh, uh, give you a feeling. There's like, uh, Timo, the dire director, he's very much into science fiction. And since Iron Sky, there has been a lot of uh, interest of having him uh, directing other properties. And there's one project, which is called Jeremiah Harm, which is uh, uh, originally a graphic no novel from Boom Studios. And uh, it's a film which is planned to be, to be in production already this year, autumn. And um, I don't know if we... Did we have the, the, the video clip? So, like we always like to do demos of, of, the, of the films we are doing. Uh, it's called Jeremiah Harm. So uh, let's watch, watch this couple of minutes, and, and then if there is any questions, I would be happy to answer you guys. Space. The final frontier. <laughs> nah, just kidding. It's the same shit everywhere. Floating rocks in the middle of who cares full of people you can't stand. Fusti here. Every time I need information, I gotta kick seven shades of shit out of him before he'll give it to me. Between you and me. Starting to think he likes it. I hate aliens. They never learn nothing. All the running, all the jumping around and dancing, and screaming and begging. All the fast ones, they think they're getting over on me. They all end up in the same place. Right where I want them. Up till now, it was 
just another day on the job. Then old Fusti here turns my whole world upside down. So, I thought I'd return the favor. Get it? Is this supposed to be funny? You expect me to believe that? Now this is where it gets interesting. And not just for him. Because when I ask, and where's he taking her? He says something I never thought I'd hear. That wasn't so hard, was it? Cut the crap and give me the numbers. Son of a bitch. He tells me I'm going home. you're wondering, yes, he's still in there. And yes, he deserves it. Now being a friendly neighborhood intergalactic bounty hunter, I spend my whole life dealing with freaks of every shape and size. It's humans I'm worried about. Should be interesting. One of our... <laughs> thank you, thank you. One of our dream also was, uh, while doing Iron Sky, was to create a, a CGI studio, and, and that's what happened, this uh, troll visual effects. Uh, was established, was based on the uh, Iron Sky team, and, and it has been up and running, who did also this demo and, and many other works so far. Uh, and I forgot to mention that, that uh, it was a uh, uh, Finnish German Australian co production. Our partner in Iron Sky is based in, in Berlin. It's 27 films production, Oliver Damian. And, and we had a nice trip together, and, and, and we are now developing together for the prequel, sequel stuff. So, if there would be any questions, I would try to, to uh, answer. Waiting for the microphone here. By the way, I see only the first row, that if somebody's then <laughs> waving back there. Okay, um, I gave you some uh, bucks for the uh, movie and I liked it very much, but uh, you mentioned the prequel and uh, there was uh, a prequel comic, uh, one part only, and the other two prequel comics, uh, they're since coming soon. Uh, when will be soon? Um, it's a good question and I have to say that I don't know the details. I'm waiting this information from Hotsmart Studios, who, uh, it's an American publisher who we end, in the end of the day, did sort of deal that they will take care of the publishing of that. And I know that they are doing a book with all three, three parts. As you said, the first we did uh, publish digitally earlier. And uh, um, I think it's coming relatively soon because there was some, some news coming from them that it's going to be completed very soon. And I'm also now waiting the fact date what's happening. Sorry, I can't say more, but I think pretty soon. Hoping so. Are there any more questions over here? No. So, thank you very much, Tero. Thank you. From film Iron Sky.
Thank you very much.